Hey group, uh, working on this uh, 2006 Wellcraft 270 Coastal uh, Tournament Edition. Basically, it's my brother-in-law's. Uh, he got it super cheap because it had taken on water. The motor was locked up and needed to be kind of all gone through. So um, I took the motor and drive off and they were both kind of trash. So we got rid of them. And um, we're in the process of repowering it right now. But the first thing I want to do before I drop the motor in it later today is go through the um, lift hatch drive motor. And uh, it was frozen. So I took it apart. I've never taken apart one of these uh, lift motors before. Um, for the engine, basically it's the engine hatch that drives it up. Um, so I pulled it apart real quick. It's really simple. Uh, all, everything internally still looks good, but let me show it to you. I'm going to walk over there in just a second. Um, and, uh, tell me what you think. Maybe if yours, you got a seized one or something, you want to fix it. This is how you do it. Okay. So pardon my mess here, but, um, here's the actual drive motor. It's a, uh, Warner electronics, uh, DM 12 series actuator. And, um, yeah, it was a bear getting out because one of the bolts that goes on the bottom was seized. But anyways, uh, so here's the gears and everything, everything looks pretty good in them. Um, and I was able to turn them by hand and then I, um, peeled these wires back a little bit, put 12 volts to it and voila. So, um, there was all this powder inside here, uh, from corrosion, which is, I guess, probably dissimilar metals. You got, um steel or aluminum pot metal whatever and then these gears fortunately they all held up um and maybe because it had a bunch of um different uh, grease in here or whatnot so uh anyways i'm about ready to put it back together because i already i already fired it up and uh little guy turns and drives that screw gear um i just went and got this wire brush and i was going to do my best to as you can see right here just kind of clean off these gears because um, it was causing it to just hang up the ever so much. And this powder stuff, when it got wet or moisture or whatever, it was creating like a little bit of a resistance on it. And so I'm just going to get this all cleaned up. And I'm going to put a bunch of grease back in it. And I'm going to seal it up with some silicone on the outside. Since I don't actually have a, um, this actual gasket here, I'm going to put some automotive um, like sealant for like an oil pan or something like that. And uh, as you can see, like there's just junk in these gears. Oh, perfect, this one comes out. So see that corrosion? I'm gonna hit my brush on it real quick. I can't do it and hold the camera here, but let me clean this up and I'll show you in just a sec. All right, so there's that gear I pulled off, hit it with a little bit of brake clean, um, cleaned it right up. I'm gonna grease that little shaft and then uh, slide it back on there and um, put this thing back together and then we'll do like a test run before we put it back in. And hopefully when I get the motor in this thing today that uh, we can um, use this thing and it'll lift up and uh, open and close that engine hatch. So I'll keep you posted and uh, be right back. So I got that all greased up. I cleaned up the corrosion as much as I could on the inside. I greased up everything. I just coated all of it. So hopefully it'll minimize any future corrosion. And then I'm gonna use a little brake clean right here, clean on the outside here and just wipe down this uh, uh, old mating surface here and then I'm going to use a little ultra black gasket uh, any RTV seal and I'm just going to throw it on there and um, and seal it up and get some screws and new screws in it and uh, install it see what it does okay so here it is the Warner Electronics DM 12 series uh, lift actuator and um, got it back together put a little paint on it I think it looks great uh, I think the whole thing maybe took 30 40 minutes Although I did have to run and get some new screws for the top here and uh, sand it, sand it a little bit and throw some paint on it, but check it out. Get it, 12, 12 bolts and look at that. Isn't that awesome? Uh, I don't know why stuff like this gives me so much enjoyment to bring something back to life that would otherwise be trash. It would be so easy uh, if I was made of money just to go buy something new and throw it in there. but. Um, I don't know, there's a certain satisfaction when you can bring something back from the dead and it costs you almost nothing. Uh, like I said, I am gonna get that new top seal here, but um, for right now, it's gonna do the job. It stays out of the weather, so it shouldn't have any direct rain penetration or anything like that. So um, uh, I guess my next step is to get that motor in that well craft, which I'm gonna uh, start doing right now. 
I'm going to make another video on that, which I'll link in this section. Um, uh, installing the Mercruiser 454 EFI into the Wellcraft 270 Coastal Tournament Edition will be coming up shortly. And then once it's in there, I will install this lovely unit and I will have uh, more to uh, show you here at uh, in the field working condition. So uh, stay tuned and please be sure to like and subscribe. These videos take more time than the actual job of actually rebuilding it. So uh, if you'd like to see more and uh, learn more as we learn together, that would be awesome. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you would be so kind. Thank you. So later in the evening, I was able to get the hatch cover finally installed. Uh, I had to deal with some uh, stuff with the engine to get that was in the backside by the transom that I wanted to get done before it was I had more limited access so um, Got that taken care of hatch installed and then I basically moved on to the wiring and uh, it, That wiring was pretty simple you would think but it still takes like 30 minutes or so to do like two wires and heat shrink everything and then try to test it and then you know you figure out that for whatever reason it's not working all right, um, so about, I don't know, three or four hours over the last couple of days messing with this thing in my free time. Um, I found that like this, there was some wiring, this switch. This had kind of been underwater as well. And these switches were like, it was getting 12 volts, but it wasn't outputting 12 volts. And if I put 12 volts to it, it would work. Just a weird situation. So. There's a bus terminal inside here, and I'll just show you. It's kind of corroded, so I'm probably going to order a new one. Um, here, let me, uh, I don't know if you can see that right there. Uh, hopefully you can see that. I can't really tell, but uh, that bus terminal. I'm going to order a new one and uh, swap it out, but I got it working. And uh, I just wanted to share it with you. Check this out. So up, there's the, there it is there. Oh, let me just switch this around. All right, here we go. So we're going up. And never mind that wire right there. I was just testing it that way, but that'll be coming out shortly. But this is using the switch. Pretty excited about this because now we can button it up and, um, you know, move on to the next thing. So the important thing to take away from this is that... Um, all these switches and wiring, you see all these wires on the back of this thing. I mean, it can be overwhelming, but here's what you got to remember. It's just power and ground. Okay. So you're either not getting a good ground or you're not getting good power. And it could be as simple as a fuse, or I think in this case, I loosened all the bus terminal screws, screws, I loosened all the bus terminal screws and I tighten and I retighten them. And, um, and then it started working. I did, have to jockey the toggle switch like 10 times or 20 times. So maybe it was the toggle switch. Maybe it was the bus terminal connections, but, um, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was this little connection here. I don't know how well you can see that, but, um, cause they're pretty corroded. So I swapped them out, but that wasn't it. And then I thought it was, uh, this little connection. These little, um, they're called stackers, stack connectors or something. And um, this is a new one, of course, not the one I took off. I thought it was those though, and it wasn't. So I had spent, I don't know, $10 at West Marine. And um, it turned out I didn't need either of those. I just needed to take a minute and focus a little bit more. And the ultimate repair costs nothing, okay? So we went from, um, a hatch that uh, a hatch drive cylinder that um, was maybe ten dollars in screws, and I just I just elected to put new screws in it, but um, and a little bit of grease and some RTV which I already had, so that was no big deal. And then the switch, so we had the mechanical part that was failed, we rebuilt that, and then we had the electrical part here that wasn't sending it connection, and that was just using a, a simple multimeter and um tracking down hey are we getting power are we losing power we did lose power see over there that term that door is open over there there's some breakers in there one of the breakers was switched makes sense you know if it took on water that it would trip one of the breakers so um the breaker that it tripped comes straight and pr provides power to this bus so i don't have a wiring diagram well i take that back i do have a wiring diagram from wellcraft on this 
it's not super intuitive or clear. Um, it just shows the arrangement of wires. It doesn't even, I couldn't even tell color of wires. So um, I just broke it down real simple. I kept tracing the power back. I traced it back to that breaker using some, I just had a bunch of speaker wires. So I'd use, I'd hook it up on this side and then I'd put my multimeter on the other side and I found the breaker that was sending power to this bus. And I was like, oh my God, even though I had pushed it and I thought it wasn't tripped, I pushed it harder once I was able to confirm on the backside of the breaker that it had power on one leg and not the other leg. I pushed the breaker harder and it actually reset. And I was like, Eureka, you know, so um, I was able to come back to the bus, troubleshoot. I chased my tail a little bit and, um, and then I was able to ascertain, let's just clean this bus or order a new bus. But uh, today, I can't get the bus in today. Um, so it's just gonna, we're gonna go with what we got and then I'm gonna move forward and go to the next step. So um, stay tuned. But as far as the uh, hatch drive motor goes, here we go one more time. We're gonna go be going up here. And I don't know if you can see how well you can see that. There you go. And then here's down. And with that, I will close this segment of the lift hatch rebuild. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe because these videos take more time than the actual repair in many cases. So um, hope you enjoy it. And uh, I'm gonna have another video here shortly on the next circuit, or I think we're gonna start the motor soon. Um, oh, gimbal bearing replacement also. So um, stay tuned and uh, I'll have more videos shortly. Thank you.